Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of the first person controller seri. Last time we created our player with simple movement. In this part we will add sprinting with stamina in our game. Additionally we can add a stamina bar in the bottom left corner to visualize it. I really hope you like it. The first step is to create our properties that we need for the stamina system. We will continue with the work in the same no tree here where we created the movement. Here on top we add a init node to set our properties. To actually set the properties we add a set object property node. The first one is the player speed. You can give any name you want. For the value we connect a simple float node where we put our movement speed. In this case we gave 0.1 last time. For the second property we can just duplicate the nodes. The second one is for the stamina. Here for the value you give the player stamina. For me I give the player 100 but you can of course change the value like you want. For the last property we connect a boolean to it. This is a state for checking if we are running or not. We leave it to false because at the start of the game we are not running. This is it. These are the only ones we need. In step 2 we set the running movement. That means we increase the movement speed if we are running and decrease it when not. To start off we need 4 keyboard states with different keyboard keys here. Now we want to merge those outputs together to 1. For this we add a merge node and connect them together. We can connect as many event nodes as we want. The merge node merges them together, that means that no matter which key is pressed from the connected ones it will execute anyways. You can see the merge node as a statement that, checks if key W is pressed, or checks if key S is pressed and so on. With this we check now if we at least moving in any direction with them keys. The reason for this is that we want to check if we first are moving before running. To understand this better, we won't only be able to run if we are first in movement. Here at the output we add a gate node. Here we can use a keyboard node and set it to the key you want to run. For me I set it to shift and then connect it to the gate node. It's important to connect from the yellow output not from the red one. To check if it's true we add a boolean node and connect it. So the logic here is done. If we are moving then we are checking if we are holding shift to run. With this logic here we are checking if the player is running. Before we are running in faster speed we want first to check a state with the branch node. We actually want to check if we have enough stamina to run. To check this we can add a compare node. Here we can compare two values. For the first we get our stamina property.
For the second value we connect a float node and set it to 5 for the minimum stamina run point. Here we want to check if we have more stamina than the given minimum float. So if this is true, if we have enough stamina we want to set a faster movement speed. Here we set our movement speed property and set it to something faster. So that we are running now we also want to set our other property to true. Now we want to check if we are not running. To do this we need a keyboard node and set it to released instead of down. If we are not holding the sprinting key we want to set the player movement speed back. And also here set the property is running state to false. Now the property knows when we are running and when not. To make it to work we need to replace our float here to our property. As you can see we can run now. The problem here is that we can run forever. We will fix that now in the next step. In this step we create the stamina system. First we want to control when we should lose stamina and also when we should gain stamina. For this we add a update node to constantly check with the branch node what the current running state is. Here we can get our is running property and connect it to the node. If it is true then we should lose stamina. We add here our stamina node to subtract the value. With the math node we can add or subtract the value of the stamina property. Here we of course want to set subtract. We add get here our stamina property and below that add the number you want to subtract. Here you can experiment with the value to get the best result.
here in between we want to add a node called clamp. With this node we can prevent bugs. With this node we are not allowing the value to go below 0 and also not above 100. With this everything stays correctly. The same thing we want if we are not running, but this time we want to add stamina. Duplicate everything and change to add. We can reduce the value a bit here. We want to add a node called sequence here. What this does, it first executes the first output and then moves on with the other outputs. We additionally need to execute another task down here. We want to check here with the branch node if we are out of stamina. To check this we can use the compare node again. Here we add a float node to check it together. If stamina is less than the minimum stamina point, we want to set the running speed back to normal. This is it. We can now test our game. As you can see we can run. If we are out of stamina we cannot run any more longer. This works perfectly. The last thing we want to add is a stamina bar to see how much stamina is left. In this last step we will draw the stamina bar on the screen. To draw anything on the screen we need to create a canvas. To create a canvas we go to the scene tab and add a new trait. Here we add a UI trait. If we press on edit we can work in here. The only thing we want to do here is to add a progress bar here on the bottom and place it somewhere you like. You can also scale the progress bar in any direction you want. Here in the properties we can rename it and also change the color. Make sure that you don't forget to save it here in the editor. As you can see here if we use the slider we can change the progress state. The same thing we will do using the stamina as the progress value. So we only have to do the controller in the node editor and then we are done.
if we play the game we can already see our stamina bar but without the inner bar. To actually control this we need a on update node to constantly set the stamina value to the stamina bar progress. To control the progress there is the set progress node available that we will use for this. Here it is important to write the name that you gave it in the canvas editor, because the system wants to know which stamina bar you mean. We get the stamina property and connect it to the current progress input. The problem here that the progress input only wants a full number instead of a decimal number. For this we need a math node and set it to round to round the stamina value. And here you set the max stamina, so in this case it is 100. And here as you can see it works perfectly. This is recommended for survival games or other simple FPS games. So this is it. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you liked it or not. If you want a part 3 then write it in the comments. If there are any questions you can ask me in the comments. See you next time.